ceremony, spectators will be asked to stand and render appropriate courtesies for honors and for our national anthem. It is appropriate for civilians to stand with right hand over heart and for military personnel and veterans to salute. Before we begin the official portion of the ceremony, we'd like to recognize several special guests in attendance with us today. Joining us today are several members of General Martin's family, including his mother, Patricia Martin, his sister, Jill Gurley, and her husband, Rus Russell, his uncle, Slater Martin and wife, Muffy, sons, Philip and Connor, and Brian Schnepp, his brother-in-law. Mr. General Martin would also like to welcome Carlisle Mayor Kirk Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, you honor us with your presence.
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Carlisle Barracks community, Sergeant First Class Joseph Clark will now present Miss Martin with a bouquet of yellow roses as a token of friendship and welcome. On this date, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army War College in Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, signed Greg F. Martin, Major General, U.S. Army Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, Sir Martin E. Dempsey. Distinguished visitors, staff and faculty, family and friends of the Greg and Maggie Martin family, thanks for being part of this ceremony today. Your presence, your dedication, your long service says more about the significance of this event than anything I could say, but I will, of course, say a few words. That is, after all, what generals do. I, you know, I, this is not part of my prepared remarks, but I've, I'm struck by the, the presence of the student population here today. I hope you know what we're going to ask you to do in the remainder of your careers. This is a, an extraordinarily complex uncertain and dangerous time for our country and for our military and we're going to ask you to take the rucksack you carry around with you and your families and we're going to put a few more rocks in it for you and this year here that you'll spend at Carlisle Barracks and the Army War College I encourage you to take the greatest possible advantage of it. That's on both the professional and the personal side. So for spouses in the audience if they're not finding balance in their life this year, you have my permission to correct that. I don't see many spouses. They probably didn't bring them on purpose. Family and friends of Greg and Maggie Martin, soldiers, civilians, and community leaders, good morning and thank you for being here today to celebrate this tremendous occasion for our Army. It's a real privilege for me to be part of this ceremony and to welcome a superb new command team to this historic Carlisle Barracks and Army War College. Once again, Greg, I have to thank you for your patience, because the last time you and I carried out a ceremony like this was in January 2009, 
when I promoted you to Major General, and I clearly recall you delaying your promotion by more than a month to give me the honor of officiating at it and for Deanie and I to be part of it. This time, however, the very important and pressing work here at Carlisle couldn't wait for me to show up, and so although we are passing the guide on today to commemorate your assumption of command, you've already rolled up your sleeves and kicked into high gear here in Carlisle Barracks. And for anyone who knows anything about Greg, I think he only has a high gear, and that's a big reason why we brought him here. So thanks again for the opportunity to participate, and you know, I hope, that I will give you my full support as you advance our efforts here to develop the Army's and the military's strategic leaders for our Army and the nation. And we're lucky to have Greg and that energy that I alluded to. You see, he recently had a major surgery that would have slowed most anyone down to a snail's pace, but not Greg. Greg forced himself to recover as rapidly as possible, throwing his energy into a full work schedule that lesser leaders would have avoided. This is a testament to Greg's resilient nature and another example of his staunch work ethic, superhuman drive, and boundless energy. Or perhaps, and Maggie may be uniquely positioned to opine on this, maybe he's just hard-headed. That aside, our Army is exceptionally fortunate to have leaders such as him in this time of great need, as I described a moment ago. Greg, thanks for taking on a challenge. Let me say something about Maggie. Success in command is clearly tied to the strength of our families, and Deanie and I are especially happy to see the inspiring command team that is Maggie and Greg Martin. Though they met rather whimsically on a blind date in Germany when Greg was a young second lieutenant, the Martins have been on this incredible journey for more than 27 years in service to our nation. Along the way, they faced many challenges, that come with the solemn responsibility of leading our soldiers and families. Today begins yet another chapter to this superb command team, and Deanie and I feel absolutely blessed to have the privilege of having you take this journey with us. It goes without saying, for those that know Maggie, but it bears repeating that those that do not, she's a remarkable woman. As the daughter of a career soldier, married to one, and the mother to two, she is quite simply the model Army spouse. Just thinking of Maggie reminds me of that old saying or that old bumper sticker, Army wife, toughest job in the Army. And without a doubt, she is the strength of the Martin clan. Oh, and Maggie, just one small request that I make both on my own behalf, but also on behalf of the class here. I just ask you to please help manage Greg's caffeine intake, because if you fail to do so, we're likely to see him uh, rappelling down one of the faces of a building, an academic building, rattling off some Clausewitzian truism or, or another, and talking to an assembly of students who would really rather be home preparing for their term papers. I, and I'm also not sure I can survive another surgery for Greg Martin. So, Maggie, I know that Greg would be the first to tell us that his success is in no small measure a reflection of your tremendous support for him, for your sons, and for the Army family. So. Thank you for all of your love and support and your friendship. Now, I'd ask all of you in the audience, please join me in a round of applause for Maggie. I want to say something about the Sons. Pretty incredible group. Occasions like this really are family affairs. And in this case, service is a family tradition. So I want to welcome and recognize Greg and Maggie's three sons, two of whom are here with us today. Their oldest son, Philip, an Army specialist and linguist, is here from Okinawa, Japan, where he is assigned to the 1st Battalion, 1st Special Forces Group. Their middle son, Patrick, is not here today because he's serving as an Army infantry lieutenant and platoon leader, currently deployed in Afghanistan with the 1st Squadron, 2nd Cavalry, the first unit that I served with in the United States Army, and I'm told that if the technology is allowing us to do so, that he may either be audio or video streaming this event. So Patrick, let me just tell you how proud we are and thank you for your service. Also here today is Greg and Maggie's youngest son, Connor, a sophomore at Harrisburg Community College, majoring in literature and philosophy. And Greg, I have to tell you, and Connor, thank God somebody finally chose a noble academic pursuit. <laughs> 
He also just recently completed the exceptionally rigorous and challenging National Outdoor Leadership School. So, Connor, great job. Well done. Now I'd like you all to give them a round of applause. You know, over 100 years ago, Elihu Root, President Teddy Roosevelt's Secretary of War, first envisioned this Army War College as a place where senior leaders could, quote unquote, study and confer on the great problems of national defense, military science, and responsible command. Today, the implementation of his vision remains just as relevant, but perhaps more urgent. We now face challenges that neither Secretary Root nor anyone from that generation could have imagined. But more important, we are likely to encounter future challenges that are as yet unseen and that lay beyond our own imaginations. For an army of war, it's often easy for someone to view the value of education as nothing more than a tax on the institution. Unfortunately, there are some signals that that may be the case for us today. The number of deferments at the War College over the past few years is nothing short of disturbing, and it's got to change, and it will change on my watch. While the experiences in the fight are richly rewarding, incredibly re important, and are producing some of the most tactically proficient war fighters that our Army has ever known, these experiences are simply incomplete. The War College experience is an opportunity for you to pull your minds out of the tactical framework and draw up to the strategic level of war. As the premier institution in the development of strategic leaders, the Army War College serves as a foundational experience for future leaders of our Army and our nation. Moreover, after nine years of war, our Army is at an inflection point where we are at risk if we do not recommit ourselves to the value of education in the development of our leaders. Therefore, we are undertaking a series of policy changes in our Army to reframe our fundamentals at every level, at every echelon of Army leader development. Our culture must see the imperative in education to develop leaders with a broader strategic outlook who understand the conduct of war and its implications. The senior leaders of our Army are committed to reinstilling into our fabric the great value of education. And there's no better place for our leaders to develop the traits I've just described than right here at the Army War College. And that's why Greg's here. His energy will ensure that we recommit ourselves to the absolute imperative to build the best strategic leaders possible for our Army and, as I mentioned, for our nation. To reinforce the role of education as a critical gate in the development of senior leaders. It's just too important, and I'm resolved to regain that edge that has made our Army, over time, the envy of other nations in the, in the world. So that's why the Army War College is so immensely important. It alone provides us a means for developing and sharpening our ability to imagine those especially disruptive challenges and to think of ways of preparing leaders to confront seemingly unthinkable events. Greg, as the Commandant, we're counting on you to provide the energy and mental rigor required to help us reinvigorate our culture as one that sees education at this great institution as an investment and not as a tax. I'm supremely confident that you are the right leader at the right time for this monumental and decisive task. In conclusion, President Dwight Eisenhower once said, farming looks mighty easy when your plow is a pencil and you're a thousand miles from the cornfield. In closing, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. If you remember nothing else of my words today, remember this. We are a nation at war and we have soldiers in harm's way who are depending on us as senior leaders to get it right. And to get it right, we need to balance the cognitive outlook of leaders who have amassed great tactical experience with equally deep strategic thinking. The Army War College is an investment in our senior leaders, and we must make it the most treasured and valued educational experience in the development of strategic leaders for our Army and for our nation. Greg and Maggie, Deanie and I congratulate you once again on this tremendous accomplishment, and we thank you for your service and for once again volunteering to take on the tough tasks in time of war. We're very proud of you both and your entire family. Victory starts here.
Thank you, sir, for those great remarks. Good morning, everybody, and thanks so much for being here. It's wonderful to be back home again in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and a great honor to be the 48th Commandant of the U.S. Army War College. Maggie and I are humbled and blessed to be here. We're thankful to follow in the footsteps and on the shoulders of so many great Commandants who came before us. We had three wonderful years here from 1999 to 2002 as a student and instructor with a great experience living in Smurf Village. And no, we never dreamed we would go from the smallest house in the Army to the biggest one. <laughs> our time here was marked by tremendous professional growth, strengthening of our family, a profound deepening of our faith through our amazing chapel community, increased fitness, and yes, I paid attention to AFRI then, Tom Williams, I ate my blueberries this morning, and these are almonds, the healthy kind, okay? So we made lots of great friends, many of whom are here today, and we had a lot of fun. In short, this experience here sustained and carried us over the past decade. And Maggie and I and our three sons, we love this community, and we're absolutely thrilled to be back home. There are far too many special friends here to individually recognize, from West Point and War College classmates to close professional colleagues and friends from 35 years of previous assignments. But no officer is complete without his trusted NCO battle buddies, and I am thankful that two of mine are here today. Command Sergeant Major Sergio Riddle, retired, and Command Sergeant Major Mike Buxbaum, who is currently the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Command Sergeant Major. They are the two finest soldiers I have ever known or served with. They were my brigade command sergeant major uh, while I commanded the 130th Engineer Brigade in 5th Corps during Operation Iraqi Freedom. If you two could stand and let's give them a round of applause on behalf of all the NCOs. I'm just going to take a minute to recognize the family again. Maggie, my bride of 27 plus years, she's just the best. My mom, Patricia, the matriarch of the family, and yet she skis every day in the winter, swims every day in the summer, rides her bike, so I think I get a little bit of the energy from her. <laughs> my father, Don, a World War II Navy vet who's not here with us, he, uh, he passed on to the next world several years ago. Uh, and then, of course, uh, my uncle Slater, sister Jill, both Army veterans and our three sons, Philip, Patrick, and Connor, and also Uncle Wardo, Ward Rodder, who is the uncle to our boys. General Dempsey, thanks for your leadership, guidance, confidence, and friendship. Your presence here today is huge, demonstrating to all of us that leader development is indeed your and our number one priority. So, sir, thank you for being here. And you really epitomize the warrior scholar, the creative and critical thinker who has the passion to lead and inspire us so powerfully at the strategic level. And if you don't know General Dempsey, he has the gift, the Irish gift, to make it a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks to all of you who have joined us to mark this special occasion. Welcome to our resident course students and our 700 plus distance education students of the classes of 2011 and 2012, and the functional area 59 officers around the world who may be watching this ceremony via our live, live streaming media service. And I'd also li like to give a shout out to my son Patrick, who again is serving with the 2nd Cavalry Regiment in Afghanistan. And Pat, if you are on the uh, video, once this ceremony is over, you need to get back to work. <laughs> it's an exciting and humbling day for me, and I truly appreciate your warm welcome and hospitality to Maggie, me, and our family. We're delighted to share your passion for educating, developing, and serving strategic leaders for the nation. The motto of the Army War College is prudence futuri, or wisdom for the future. Our collective presence, presence here is a national investment for a better future, a future we can and must shape. I believe it's up to each of us to make our lives count. The Army has created the perfect environment for Maggie and I to make it count it's why we've stayed on the Army team for all these years. Throughout my career, 
we found inspiration in three aspects of Army life. First, we know we're part of something much larger than ourselves, doing work of enormous importance. Second, we're continuously inspired by the young troops and leaders who voluntarily raise their right hand in a time of war and say, send me to go defend our nation. Third, we've been challenged and inspired by some great senior leaders who fearlessly tackle the toughest, most complex jobs at the strategic level and who manage to make this hard work joyful, a labor of love. And this is the role we are preparing you, the students, for. I found each of these inspirations alive and strong here at Carlisle Barracks. As I grow to appreciate anew the extraordinary people who serve here, I see parallel with my lifelong zeal for the Army. I am inspired by you. I see your passion for our mission, and I recognize your commitment to excellence and intellectual rigor. This special place takes my spirit to a higher level. So, sir, my energy level is already increased, and I trust that you, too, feel this power. This is a place that inspires you to see what's possible and to recognize that being great is the product of an incredibly important mission and exceptionally talented people who have a passion for what we do. We share a deep commitment to provide the strategic leadership education and the wisdom that our young troops and our nation expect from us. You know that I'm enthusiastic and fired up about this place, but we'll need a lot more than enthusiasm to provide the leadership development and the wise counsel that's needed for the challenges ahead. Since 2001, we've adapted to a constantly changing environment, and we can expect more unforeseen and perhaps unimaginable challenges in the future. That's why the Army War College mission is so important, one with great far-reaching impact. We're on the eve of crucial transitions for our armed forces, and our shared responsibility is to develop the strategic leaders and the wisdom to give us a more secure future. Our responsibility here is enormous. Units deployed throughout the world expect leadership excellence. Families and neighbors expect their young men and women, our sons and daughters, to be blessed with leadership excellence. And our citizens expect us to protect them and keep them safe from those who would do them harm. There are enemies in our world. Our responsibility is to develop and serve strategic leaders for any and all threats. And yes, we must use our imagination to anticipate and counter them. Ours is an intellectual fight to set the conditions for our great troops to turn ideas into successful action and effective results. We must make the War College in our role here count. We must make the most of this college, of this opportunity to make a difference. Here, we build upon wide-ranging operational experience. We build broad understanding, and we shape thoughtful innovation for an international security environment of constant change. No one else does that like the Army War College. Nowhere else do people look the most complex dilemmas in the eye and develop sophisticated, comprehensive, and workable solutions for our nation. That's why we must be great at what we do. Our future is at stake. We're fortified by our warrior spirit. It motivates us to, be, to become warriors. It steels us to persevere through challenge and exhaustion. It deepens our resolve and sharpens our minds. Here at the Army War College, each of us must maintain that spirit, that edge, that sense of purpose that keeps us alert, adaptive, and aggressive. But we need not be in exotic, dangerous places to apply it. We need it right here, where a very tough job awaits us to provide wisdom for the future. Everything we do across the Army War College must maintain constancy of purpose to educate, develop, and serve strategic leaders for the nation's future, a wise future. And for the good of our Army, our joint force, and our nations, I ask each of you to recommit to a shared mission of communicating what we do here so that our influence may continue to grow. Each of us has to take that role and shoulder it to be strategic communicators. We also must collaborate internally and externally so that we speak and serve with a unified voice and purpose that will advance understanding of strategic leadership through compelling logic, 
critical thinking in the virtues of competence, candor, and compassion. I will continue to listen to your wise counsel during our time together. I know that you all are extraordinarily successful, effective people, and each of you will, will be willing to share your insights on a better way ahead. Together, we'll create a new fusion of experience, intellectual courage, and discipline, a collaboration across all organizations of this great Army War College, taking a whole of the U.S. Army War College approach, and with our partners in the larger academic and defense community as well, both in America and with our friends and allies around the world. With your help, we'll strengthen our processes and strategies at the War College to pursue those core concepts. Critical thinking about our purpose and strategy, as well as creative, collaborative solutions in partnership with those organizations that share in our passion and our purpose. From West Point to the Combined Arms Center to TRADOC, from the Naval Postgraduate School to our sister and allied service senior leader colleges, as well as the leading think tanks and universities across this great nation and world of ours, at every level, in the seminar rooms and the meeting rooms, as we reflect and write, we'll pursue excellence in leadership and strategic thought. Each of you has an important role in making us successful, in making the U.S. Army War College and keeping it great. The best senior leader college in the world, the best and most preeminent center for strategic thought, and which produces the best national security professionals in the world. I believe it's up to each of us to make our lives count. Every individual here plays a key role in our mission. So, in conclusion, make your life count. And together, let's make the U.S. Army War College count by being the very best that we can be. Prudence Futuri, wisdom for the future, Army Strong.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Please remain in place until the official party and honored guests have departed. Major General and Mrs. Martin will host a reception for invited guests at the Bliss Hall patio. Thank you for attending today's ceremony.